Hello, this is Richard White, and I wanted to talk to you a little bit about writing a blackjack program. If you're in the Intro to Computer Science class, then um, this may be your independent project, number one. And you actually face three challenges in this particular assignment. You have to try to figure out how to use modules. There's a couple of modules that are available to you. You have to figure out how to set up your blackjack program, which is probably the easiest of those. And then you also have to figure out how you're going to count up the values of cards. So let's address each of those one at a time. Uh, first of all, to write this program and to use the card and deck modules, you need to have those in the same directory that you're working in. So in this particular case, uh, you can see here that I've got card and deck in my directory. So if I run Python or run any program and I import deck, import card into my workspace, then I'm going to be able to use those. If you want to find out information about how to use those, there's some information in your handout, but you can also always just ask for help, say on the deck module, and it'll give you a bunch of information here that's part of the documentation. To move through this documentation, you can arrow down a, a line at a time, or you can use the F key to go forward. So I'm jumping forward by a page. The B key moves back through that documentation, and the Q key quits that documentation. But let me go in and take a look real quickly and see that it looks like there are some things that I can do with that deck. I've got all of deck. I've got cards left. These are commands that I can use, methods that I can use with this class to manipulate a card deck. So let's see some examples on how to do that. First of all, if you're going to create a card deck, you, uh, or if you're going to use a card deck, you have to create a new one. I'll call this one My Deck. You need to uh, indicate the name of the file that it comes from, and that's uh, the deck file, deck.py. And then you have to indicate the name of the class. In this case, it's capital D, deck. So that creates a deck. And we can go through that deck, actually, and see what it looks like in there. I can say for card in, and then I'm going to put in the name of my deck, my deck dot all of deck. This returns the entire list of the um, cards there. And uh, I'll, tell you what, I'll go ahead and print out each of those. I'll print out the card and then I'll separate it with a, a comma so we can see them all in one long line here. If I take a look at that, there's a list of my deck, all the cards in my deck. Uh, card by card, and uh, yeah, it's as you'd expect. You can issue additional commands, of course. My deck got shuffle. doesn't return anything, but it does shuffle the deck. So if I issue that same command to go through and look at the deck now, you can see that it, it's, uh, been, it's out of order. It starts with the King of Diamonds now, then the Ten of Hearts, then the Jack of Clubs. So we've got that deck that's been shuffled. If I want to deal some cards, I can deal cards. Um, let's set up my hand. I'll set up a hand of cards and pretend I'm going to play five card draw. I'll take my deck and deal cards. How many cards? Five. That'll put those cards in my hand. If I want to see what those are, I can use this same loop here, but instead of going through my deck or all of deck, my deck, all of deck, all that, I can say four card in my hand and print out and see the cards that are listed there. So these are the cards that I've drawn off that deck. Pretty straightforward. Um, if you want to draw one more card in there, you could say my hand append, and we'll get one more card on there. So that's my deck dot deal card. Just get a single card on there. We've just added another card into the deck, the hand. So if I take a look at my hand now, it's got the same cards as before, but now I have a seven of hearts as well. So that'll give you some idea of what you can do with that. That's uh, how you can use the deck class and the card class. There's also the heart card class that you can see. Information here on what you can do with those, getting a rank and getting a suit for any particular card there. Perhaps most importantly for you is this one right here, the blackjack value, BJ value, which gets the points value of the card there. That'll be important for us when we start counting card values later on. The second thing you want to be able to do is to actually set up some sort of pseudocode for your blackjack program. So I'm going to go ahead and start doing that right here. 
I'll go ahead and put in the shebang, and then we'll um, we'll jump in and see how this is going to work here. I'm just doing pseudocode, and if you know how blackjack works, uh, it all begins with dealing cards to the player. So I'm just going to put a little note in here that I need to do that. I'm not worrying about the main program or anything. I'll worry about that in a few minutes. Uh, after you deal the cards to the player, almost immediately you check to see if that uh, if the sum of their cards, if uh, player card sum maybe, if that's equal to 21, then we're going to know that they won. So um, I'll just put a note here that they win. And if that doesn't happen, if that's not the case, and again this is all just pseudocode, I'll fill it in later on, um, then we get to go to the dealer. So we'll go to the dealer and deal cards to the dealer. And of course we check the dealer's cards. If dealer card sum, I guess. You can see with my pseudocode here, I'm kind of making up variable names that I might use later on. If that's equal to 21, then dealer wins. But if neither of those two things happened, if dealer card, if neither of those two things happens, then we jump down to another else down here. And now we get into the business. Now we start seeing if either the player or the dealer are going to start hitting and getting new cards to add to their add to their list, add to their total. So um, how does that work? I guess if a player wants to hit, uh, if player wants to hit, sorry, let's make that a comment. If player wants to hit, give them a card. I'll put that on the next line here. Give him or her a card. And then we'll also, uh, after that, we'll need to check the total, I guess. Check total. Check player card sum, I said. And we're going to continue allowing them to do that. We're going to continue allowing them to get a new card and check their sum and get a new card and check their sum repeatedly um, until one of two things happens. And I guess that's one of the things. This is, this is a, a loop here. I'm starting to think that they're going to be looping over this. So uh, I'm thinking this needs to be maybe a while loop or something here. I need to say instead uh, while card sum, sorry, player card sum, is still not over 21. It could be equal to 21, but it, it can't be over 21. So while it's less than or equal to 21, and while they want to hit, and they want to hit, while those two things are true, we're going to give that player a card and then check the player card sum. Obviously, we're going to need to um, see if they want to hit. So maybe I'm going to have an input in here, ask if they want to hit. And if they want to hit, then we're going to go in and give the card, check the player card sum. And then um, at some point, once, th once this is done, once we're over with all this, we're going to have to uh, fall out of that loop, and then we'll say something like, well, why did we fall out of the loop? If player card sum is greater than 21, then we know they busted and they've lost. I also I suppose another thing that could happen is, uh, let's do an elif, elif player card sum is equal to 21, then we know they won. Else, and then what's the other option? We've fallen out of the loop, they're no longer getting hits. So once we're done with all that, now we have to take care of the dealer. Dealer gets to take cards. And we'll have some other things that are going to happen down there. So this is the basic outline of the program um, with a few, quite a few modifications that we'll have to make as we go through. And, and maybe there's going to be some stuff in the logic here that I'll have to play around with. But this is the general idea. And once I really get good, you can see that some of these statements that I've made already, they're, they're very close to Python. So I can, I can say things like uh, print u1. I've just replaced um, some of the pseudocode with Python code. Uh, else, pretty easy to change this to a legitimate Python code there. Dealing cards, I haven't figured out how I'm going to deal cards yet, but I bet I can do that based on what we just talked about. And checking things like the 
player card sum, this is where it's going to get really interesting. And that's the next thing that we'll investigate. OK, let's see if we can get to the point where we're actually doing a little bit of coding here. So uh, I'm back to my Blackjack program here. I've cleared out everything, cleared out of the pseudocode, because I want to focus on just this idea of summing up the value of all the cards in a hand. So I've set up a little test program here. I'm defining a main program. I've imported deck, and I'm defining a main program. I'm going to create a deck here in this line, not line 9. In line 10, I'm going to shuffle the deck. In line 11, I'm going to deal two cards, just as I would in playing Blackjack. And then I'm going to call this function that I haven't written yet, some player cards. I'm going to call that function that is going to work on the cards in my hand here. This some player cards is what we're going to write right now. And then I'm going to print out the value of my hand value just so we can see what happened there. This is a very short little main program just to uh, allow us to test this function that we're writing. So let's define that function, def some player cards. And we've told the program here that we're going to be sending in the value my hand. My hand is a list of cards. So I know that into this function, I'm going to be getting a list of cards. And so uh, I'm going to let Python know that a card list will be coming in. That's just a variable name that I made up. And what am I going to do in here? I'm, I'm supposed to add up the values of all these cards. So I think I'm going to ultimately be returning a sum. That value is going to start out at 0. And then at some point farther down here, I'm going to say return sum. That will be the end of my function. In the meantime, though, how am I going to add up all the values in the cards in there? Well, first things, uh, first things first, I need to go through all those cards. So I'll set up a loop to do that. I don't want to be indented there. For card in my card list using the variable name up above. And what am I going to do with each of those cards? Uh, I need to know the value of that card. And I just happen to know that in the card function, maybe I'll need to import that function up here. I'll go ahead and import it just to be safe. In that card function, I can get the blackjack points value of that card by calling card.bj value, blackjack value there. That's going to take the blackjack value of the card. If it's a jack or a queen, it'll this will be 10. If it's 2, it'll be 2. And it'll store it in value. I have one problem, though. The blackjack value for an ace can be either 1 or 11. And in the official card definition, the blackjack value of an ace is 1. But I need to allow for that 11 possibility. Um, and I can't just decide that automatically. At this point, I really need to ask the user what he or she wants to consider for the value of that ace. But I'm only going to do that for this card if it's got a value of 11. So if the value of the card that I'm looking at here is 1, then I'm going to check with them. I'm going to print a statement here that says, uh, what? I have the, actually, whether or not they're going to change is going to depend upon what the values of their other cards are, right? So maybe I need to print out all their cards. Print, here are your cards. I'm going to print out that statement there. And then I need to print out all the cards in their card list. So for a card in card list. Uh, this is a nested loop, a loop inside a loop. And I'm going to need to print out each of their cards. Print a card. That'll print out the value of each of those cards. And then I need to ask them. I say, um, print, do you want, and then I'm going to print out the current card that they have here. The current card that I'm considering, it's an ace. It has a value of 1. I'm only considering this current card. Do you want card to be worth 1 or 11? That's my question to them. And they're going to input that value then. Value is going to be equal to eval input. We'll see what they type in there. I might want to do some error trapping here to make sure that they're entering just 1 or 11. But for right now, I'm just testing the concept. So let's see how this works. I'll get that value. And then whatever it is, that's going to be what I add in to the sum. Now, value here is going to be 1 or 11, if they've done this correctly. Value up here is going to be any other value. 
10 if it's a jack, 3 if it's a 3, whatever. So by the time I get done here and I'm done with this if statement, I've got a value, either 1, 11, or whatever else it was supposed to be. And so I need to add that value into sum. Sum equals sum plus value. So I'm adding that into sum there. And when I get done with the loop, when I get done going through every card in the list, then I'm going to return whatever the sum is there. So let's see how this works for us. I'm going to go ahead and uh, save this program. And then let me run over here and try and run it and see what happens. Here are your cards, King of Diamonds, Ace of Spades. Oh, I got an Ace in the very first one. Do you want Ace of Spades to be worth 1 or 11? If I choose 11, I'm going to get 21, right? So let's try that. And it says 21. So this worked just the, perfectly the first time out. Let me try again. Let me run that again. I get a five and an ace of clubs this time, another ace. This time I'm gonna make it worth one. And so what do I get then? Five and one, I get the six. So if it's anything else, blackjack, apparently it's giving me a 14 there. I'm not printing out the total list of cards every time. I'm just printing out the list of cards when they have to make a decision. So 14 is my total there. Two of hearts, ace of diamonds. Do you want ace of diamonds to be worth one or 11? If I make it worth 11, it's going to come out to be 13. So this looks like it's doing exactly what I want it to do. I got a 20 there. I got a 13. This is very nice, getting lots of good values here. I want to show you the error trapping that you need to put in, though, once we get to a value, once we get another ace there. And maybe it's going to be hard for me to get an ace because at this point, no, we're good. We're good. There we go. Ace of clubs to be worth 1 or 11. If I do some cheating here and I notice... Well, I've got the seven of spades here. If I want to get 21, I need to make sure that I add 14 to that. So I'm going to make my ace of clubs worth 14. Well, that's going to give me 21, but that was me cheating. So we don't want to allow for that. So one of the things I'm going to want to put in here then is make sure that they put this value in here. Um, maybe what, what I'll do, I'll, once I get their value in there, I'll say um, while value is not in 1 or 11. That's one way of saying that. I'll repeat value equals eval input. That will catch that error. So if I try and cheat later on, we'll see what happens now when I do this. I'll have to get an 11 here, or rather an ace. Oop, there it is. What happens if I try to make it 13 now? it doesn't accept it. It's only going to accept 1 or 11. I can't even put in negative numbers. It's got to be 1 or 11. So if I make it 11, then it'll give me the 21. So good. I've made a nice little error trap in there. It looks like this is probably going to work for me. So this sum player cards is a kind of a bare bones version of how you can add up all the values in a player's hand and give them the option of choosing 1 or 11. How you're going to get that to work for the dealer is another question entirely, and we'll have to talk about that another time. I hope this helps.